Hey everyone, so the 2018 Microsoft E3 Media Briefing kicked off with something truly epic, our first look at the next chapter in the Master Chief story, Halo Infinite. Interesting choice of title there, it was widely believed that 343 Industries would be concluding its own trilogy of numbered Halo games. But this choice of title, the extended period of development up until now, not to mention the content of this teaser makes me think that maybe at some point there was a rethink. And certainly when we look at 343's accompanying blog entry, the impression is that they're going to take their time with this one to get it right. I mean, the blog's even titled Our Journey Begins, but clearly the extended period of development seen so far has already paid off. The new Slipspace engine looks like delivering a true generational leap beyond any Halo game we've seen. And that makes me wonder, the time left in development, combined with Phil Spencer's talk of new console hardware in the plural no less, is what we're seeing here indicative of a next-gen Halo experience. Now this is important stuff and I want to tackle that directly before I move on to a closer look at the Infinite teaser. Now I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing new hardware from both Sony and Microsoft by the holiday 2020 period, but the generational leap can be delivered a full year earlier if the platform holders want to do so. And let's be clear, this is a possibility. The technological building blocks necessary will be there and Sony has already started to talk about the end of the PlayStation 4 generation. And when you look at what this Halo trailer is delivering, it's kind of challenging to think of the Xbox One S, the standard console, delivering an experience to anything like this level of fidelity at least. The X, well that's a different story and something that caught my eye here was a specific mention in 343's blog entry about modernizing and taking advantage of the Xbox One family. The timings alone suggest that this will be a cross-gen game, but what we have here is a subtle but fundamental promise that this game will be playable on the machines we have today. And for many of you out there, that's going to be crucially important. Next up, I want to talk quickly about the fundamental vision behind what we're seeing here. With Halo 4 and its sequels, 343 Industries gave us its own interpretation of the series' visual style, of the gameplay, of the lore. Now, this game is based on events that take place after Halo 5, but it also points to drawing inspiration from the most iconic and historic parts of the franchise. And that kicks off with the design of the Master Chief's armor itself, which is more reminiscent of the Bungie Halo 3 design than of anything from 343's successors. Then there's the music at the end, again taken from Halo 3. And the chip insert shot. Yeah, it's all starting to feel very familiar. And it's the same with this warthog shot from the end of the teaser. Maybe not so much Halo 3 here, but there's a strong vibe here from the original Combat Evolved. And uh, yeah, maybe with lighting more in line with the Anniversary Edition. I kind of think these nods are intentional and there do seem to be some Easter eggs here for the die-hard fans. Now let's talk tech and rewind to the beginning of the trailer. First red flag for me here. Game engine demonstration, it says there. Okay, so essentially from my perspective, if you don't see the words real time, you have no real guarantee whatsoever that the final product is gonna look like this. In the worst case scenario, effectively, the developer has all the time in the world to individually render each frame on hardware that can be many times more powerful than the console. So we have no real idea to what extent this is real or not. And you look back to Halo trailers like this one, and well, Halo 5 didn't really look anything like it. But I do think 343 is a developer with something to prove here. And while it might not be comfortable showing off a real-time demo on Xbox One X or even PC hardware, the accompanying blog says that the engine demo is a clear indication of the direction they're heading and a great snapshot, they say, of where their tech is right now. The question is to what extent 343 might have pursued effects that simply wouldn't be possible in real-time rendering. Now I've got to say that the presentation in the Halo Infinite reveal is very very clean here, but at the same time if we zoom in really close, 
pixel and subpixel detail isn't being totally smoothed away. So we aren't looking at an extreme rendering resolution here. More on that in a bit. So what is this technology offering? Well, there has been some talk of an open world here for the next Halo, based on the vast vistas we're seeing in this trailer, which really do look highly impressive. But what catches my eye here is the emphasis on showing wildlife to populate the terrain, something that we've not really seen much of in prior Halo titles. Now, shots like this really do suggest a massive world to explore here. And in actual fact, if we flash back all the way back to the year 2000, to the original Halo demo from Bungie, you do get something of an open world vibe. And I do wonder whether 343 is attempting to tap into that, to tap into the history. But with that said, there's also the vibe that the developer is trying to get back to the heart of what Halo is actually about. And that's all about the combat set across an already large canvas. The idea being to give players options, freedom, plus the sense of discovery. Meanwhile, elsewhere within the demo, the emphasis is all about getting the intricate details right at a much closer range. Not something you typically see in an open world game, but something very important to Halo, which relies upon a strong narrative focus and yeah, has plenty of cutscenes. The opening shot is a beautifully lit forest with a strong focus on fidelity and materials from the rock face to the foliage. And yeah, that initial emphasis on lighting is also hugely important. 343 wants to show us how materials are perfectly integrated with illumination, while at the same time giving us a beautiful demonstration of its mastery of volumetric light. And before we leave this shot, let's zoom in on the bokeh depth of field, where the effect is broken up with a subtle but effective noise distortion shader. And while we're zooming in like this, note the film grain too giving us some idea of where 343 is going in terms of its overall aesthetic. The next shot is our first look at fauna, water and reflections before we shift to a showcase in the sheer detail 343 is aiming for. Without specific word from the developer, there's no specific confirmation for this, but the look here is highly reminiscent of photogrammetry, a technique that gives a remarkably realistic approximation of the look of materials and how they interact with light. I also really like the composition work here in terms of how the virtual camera is focused, emphasizing the part of the shot where the developer wants our attention. There's a spectacular shift in focus on the next shot, which again highlights extreme detail. And again, the emphasis in volumetrics, this time on the dust cloud. 343's emphasis on detail continues with this beautiful panning shot, showing puddles collecting in divots of mud, again managing to reflect the environments before we move on to this shot of the stampeding double-horned rhinos. Again, another emphasis on volumetric dust effects, not to mention the sheer amount of beasts on screen. Just before that, we get a close-up of the rhino hide here, giving us an idea of just how detailed the core models and textures actually are. The sheer amount of entities possible is also shown in the final shot before the focus shifts to the Master Chief's helmet. Beyond that, the demo pushes on to show the established technologies that we've already covered presented in different ways. This knotty tree trunk is highly rich in detail, accompanied by lit dust particles and placed exquisitely within the scene with that lighting technology. So yeah, lighting, texture detail, water. Water, always a crucial focus in any Halo game. It just looks beautiful here with the shot ending with the hint that maybe we'll get some underwater missions in Halo Infinite. Waves breaking on the shore here also show us what the water tech is capable of. Again, there's the emphasis on high frequency detail on the sand there. And I've got to admit, I'm curious to see if shadow quality remains this high in the final shipping game. Reaching the closing moments of the trailer, 343 indulges us with a look at their grass and foliage tech, again from both short and long distance. What's interesting in this shot is the temporal stability in the grass, the lack of flicker in movement effectively when the high contrast edges on the rings there, well they are noticeably shimmering. There is a touch of aliasing in this demo then when 343 could have easily super sampled it away. The presentation is hugely impressive, but it's not flawless, and that's actually a good thing in terms of authenticity. 
So what's the takeaway then? First of all, the quality, the fidelity here. It's like nothing we've seen from a Halo game before. I think we're going to be retaining the wide open combat areas that the series is famous for. But we'll be seeing a huge upgrade in terms of lighting, volumetrics, and in how dynamic the environments can be. So what we're seeing here does kind of hint at a time of day mechanic. Then there's the showcase we have for the amount of entities the engine is capable of handling. I mean, it's really impressive. And yeah, what if that was applied to combat? Nice, right? I guess my only concern is about whether this trailer over promises and the extent to which the technology here will work on Xbox One X and more pointedly the S. Oh, and another thing, as you might have noticed, Everything rendered here is delivered at 60 frames per second in line with Halo 5. And yes, this is a native 4K resolution or potentially higher. So was this done for the purposes of Microsoft's presentation or is it actually the target for the game? If this is a cross-generational title, will the existing machines drop down to 30? Obviously it's early days, but I kind of want to know. What we have here then is an enticing vision, but the feature set and fidelity shown here in combination with development timing that seems to propel us directly into next gen, well, I've got even more questions then. Questions that will have to be answered another day, I guess. So, in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Please do like and subscribe, and yes, if you've already subbed, Make sure you ring the bell to get instant notifications when a new Digital Foundry video drops. A quick note here that we have access to pristine quality 4K60 assets of the Microsoft briefing. Quality good enough to allow our crazy zooms in this video. And if you want to get that similar level of quality for yourself, join the DF Patreon where we have excellent quality downloads available to all of our supporters. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching.